welcome to The Journey. This is episode one of a football series that will be covering the careers of footballers from their childhood to date in depth. My name is Gooby and today I've got the phenomenal Rai Younger here. Hi Ryan. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us today. Yeah, no, no problem. So, may I ask where you're coming from? We'll uh, put you on the spot. I'm actually coming from training, to be fair. Past Is it? A little nap, then I came straight here. Oh, yeah. I feel very important because you made time for me today. <laughs> <laughs> so, before I dive right into um, speaking to you, obviously, about your career aspirations and your phenomenal career, um, there's an elephant in the room, which is obviously COVID. Yeah. And it's been a hectic experience, I think, for everyone. Can you tell us a little bit of your COVID experience, like with the lockdown and how you dealt with that? Um, free lockdown, but what, this time, about this time last year, I think it was. Mm. Uh, the tough period to go through, obviously, having to stop normal life and then trying to like find things to do is, is, is a bit difficult, a bit boring, but then obviously, you, you start to do things that you probably wouldn't do any other day if you wasn't working. So of that course. More, become more creative and stuff, start doing things that you've never done. And it sometimes turns out to be fun, sometimes it's not be, you know, how you're feeling. So mm. try and make the most of it, which I think I did to be fair. So I think I was alright with it. Obviously, because now everything, your life completely changes, or in how you do things. Yeah, like completely, like everything's just changed. You just sat at home, mm-hmm. waking up. You literally don't know what day it is because things are just turning into one day. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy, but like I think we've, we've we've obviously gone through it quite well, and then here we are today, and things have got came back to norm- normality. So um, it's been a long journey, but you know things are coming back together. So I think it'll be okay. Finally, yeah. And according to a lot of reports and the press, you um, were unfortunate and you had COVID. Is yeah. that true? Yeah, I ended up getting. I can't remember when it was, but yeah, I had to isolate for, I think it was 10 days. Oh, uh, how was that? Yeah, that was the really worst, <laughs> <laughs> worst, worst, um, time really? Time. Yeah, it's just, oh, because it's just, it's, just, it's dreadful, man. It's just sitting at home, mm-hmm. you can't even go for a walk or anything, just sat in the house. Mm-hmm. So I was busy playing PS4, you know, trying to <laughs> play some time. Of course, because now you have to look for activities. Yeah, so I think that's what I was doing to be fair. And mm-hmm. then um, once um, my, my, my isolation was done, I was, I was buzzing. It was like freedom finally. Yeah, just full, full of relief. It was just, uh, you know. So how did how did you get on? Like, did you cook for yourself? Did you order in? What what were you doing? How were you? A bit of both, to be yeah. fair. We um, ordered some. I don't know if you heard of it, it's Gusto's. So they deliver the food. Mm-mm. It's like, sorry, excuse me. Sorry. They, they, <laughs> they deliver the food, um, the recipes and stuff, and then there's like come in, in, a, in, a, in a little book. Oh, okay. How about to cook it and stuff, and how long it takes to cook. So. Like an instruction manual? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, it's, so it's like pre packaged meals, yeah. and then the instructions how to, yeah. how to cook it? Yeah, oh. So it's, it's quite easy to be fair. And obviously, every now and then, just all of a time you can't be bothered cooking. So. I didn't even know you can cook. I'm quite surprised. When, so, I, when I have instructions from cook. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't cook like something like from scratch? Anything that's basic, maybe like a... Mm. Uh, how would you call it? You know, just like spaghetti and mince, do you know what I mean? Like a bolognese, anything basic like that. But if it's anything too, too different, it's just I have to have instructions in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've just tuned in right now, um, I don't think I've introduced Ryan properly. <laughs> <laughs> He's quite the... Quite a humble man. Well, um, this is Mr. Ryan Yambe. He's a professional footballer and he plays for Blackburn Rovers. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. And you are a right back, am I right? Yes. Um, but I understand that you alternate between two positions. So it's right back and what other position do you play? My main position is right back, but I can, I, I can, do, I can play um, centre back. That's what I need, need a down here, but I prefer to be, to be playing right back. So right back is your position? Yeah. All right. So let's dive right into it. What is your football philosophy? Uh, I think it's just about, um, you know, doing the basics right. And I think mm-hmm. if you do those kind of things, you will um, have a good career. By basics, I mean like, you know, general stuff that everyone says, hard work, doing things properly, always, you know, not being complacent. Right. So I think if you just have those basics and 
I think any kind of sports, just fundamentals of it, and you, 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 I think you'd excel to your, to your level. And obviously, with the assistance that you have from other people to, to improve on whatever you need to improve on, I think things will come together and uh, yeah, you'll have a good career. And that form is obviously the greatness. Yeah. So yeah. it's basically like a team effort, resources, yeah. different yeah, resources you, you, put together. Yeah, you can never do anything by yourself, like, literally, even if mm-hmm. you're improved, you can't. But you could, but I think it's it's better if you if you're learning from someone else as well who's helping you, you know, because mm-hmm. sometimes when you try to do things by yourself, it's a bit draining. You so, can't cope as yeah, well. Yeah, so. And also, you just can never know as much. Yeah, exactly. You're always willing to learn. Different kind of minds come together and it just teaches a lot of things, so it's, um, it's yeah, I think that's about it. Of course. Yeah. So you're half Namibian, right? No. Are you half Namibian? Are you half them. British? What is it? I'm f- I don't know, you can't say how. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm full of Namibian. I was born in Namibia. So right. I'm, I'm, I'm a Namibian fully. And obviously, I got a British passport and citizenship. So, um, mm-hmm. But I'm a Namibian, yeah. Namibian at heart, Namibian born, Namibian bred. Yeah, exactly. All right, so tell me about your transition moving from Namibia to England over here and how was that transition for you? Um, transition. So, obviously, my mom. Mm-hmm. I was doing school and then she came here to do a um, nursing course and then obviously she ended up qualifying so she got a job this side. She left me down that side, I was just going to do, do, the, do the work here. I was as a kid, mm-hmm. you don't know what's going on, you know, where's your mum, mm-hmm. where, where's she gone and then um, mm-hmm. and obviously she brought me this side, Of course. obviously to come do the education and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know how, how to explain, do you know what I mean? It's like, you used to kid and then your mum all of a sudden just goes missing. Mm. And then, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say I went through a lot because there was other people around me that took care of me, which um, I could probably call my other mothers as well. Of course. Because then they're quite strong people. So um, it's, not, it's not like my mum left me alone. I, I was taught to her on the phone and stuff, but um, yeah, it's quite difficult. But at the same time, um, I think it made me grow up a little bit more, like mature a bit more. So uh, yeah, it's, it's okay. Of course, yeah. and you know, there's obviously the culture shock, just like you're saying, because you were, you were quite young when you moved to to England. Yeah. How was that for you? Was that was that a difficult process, or did you did did you adjust quickly? Um, I think I adjusted quite quickly. Mm. Like obviously, I was still quite young, like you said. Um, so yeah. obviously, I was still in a in a growing phase where you know, just trying to get things that around you, just trying to no life and then um, was when I moved to this side it was um, it was difficult because going to school and I was, it was kind of like um, difficult to interact with people and stuff because you're coming from a abroad country and you're quite young still you know, and it's different kind of like scenery and um, the way they teach you and stuff so it was difficult but I think I got the hang of it quite quickly so um, <laughs> it was okay you're basically just thrown into the deep end and you just had to swim yeah pretty basically much. Just, <laughs> just, just deal with it so um, but I guess also the age that you came in was a good age because it was good. It was you were still in the, in the age where you can uh, ad- adapt and learn new things and adapt to a new environment. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, mm. like being quite young, it would have been different if I probably did come like like now. Yeah, so, I mean, it would be completely different. So yeah. I, I think I was ten when I first came. So obviously, it's it's still young. You know, mm. and maybe for probably about six years later, or I think it would have been a quite different story. But yeah, luckily I came at a young age. So you moved to England while you were young. So when you got here, did you know that you were going to be a footballer? No. <laughs> so when did you know that you were going to be a footballer? Uh, what was the uh, the aha moment? Uh, so obviously I, I was just I came when I first came. I joined um, a local team got the NJ Willenshaw. Mm-hmm. I was just playing football, you know, like any other kid, just playing, playing football and enjoying it. And then I got scarred for a Blackburn. Ah, so this team that you joined, was it via the academy? Well, no, 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 it was from, um, so... Did you it's call it? It's a local team around the area. They came ah. to school, they gave out like letters and stuff, like, oh, if you want to join, join a team, you can come and join the team. And I was like, oh yeah, why not? I like football, I used to play football, I can maybe be in like the streets and stuff, so... Um, wait, 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 wait. I'd like to hear more about that. You used to play football in the street? Like running around like without shoes, yeah, like in the street street. No, so obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I lived in a little clothes where I, when I was staying with my auntie in, in, in Vinduk. So um, mm-hmm. just me and my cousin, the neighbors would just be like, used to 
use a gate as a goal. Really? Just playing, playing football. Uh, it was, yeah, it was quite fun. Just like, and yeah, we could do it. Just missing about. Yeah, just having kick And now today it's... Different story, yeah. You I'm, know. I'm, I'm, living, I'm living the dream. You are. You are the, You are actually the, the Namibian dream for, for footballers. Yeah. And so this, this local soccer club approached you guys while you were still in school and just, you know, as an offer to say, as an extra mural basically like after school or for like soccer. Yeah. And then Blackburn Rovers then poached you from there. Is that how you ended up in, in the academy? Yeah, so I was just playing, uh, I don't know how long I was playing for them. It must have been like uh, maybe a year or something. I don't need to show up. Mm. And then um, I got approached by Blackburn. Mm-hmm. And then I went on trial for six weeks. And then, um, yeah, so they signed me. And then, and then I just thought, this, you know, when things get serious. And, and I was still, like, what, a teenager, 13 mm-hmm. and stuff, but um, it was, you know, when I thought, like, God, oh, this is probably my best chance to, to, to uh, make a professional, so, um, yeah, that was one. So when they saw you, they were like, no, this guy's really good. Probably so. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, while we're still on, on, on the topic of your childhood, I know that um, a lot of stars obviously have other footballers that they look up to or that, you know, brought out that inspiration or even if it's not inspiration, just that gave you that drive to say that, you know what, I'm going to make something out of my football career. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have someone like that or who was that person for you? Obviously, um, I'm not say obviously, but um, I used to really like Rio Ferdinand, the United supporter. Mm. You know, um, like I, obviously the way he was a player and a lead on the pitch, you know, and of course his defending skills as well. So um, mm. I think that was one person I looked up to. And he's a phenomenal. He's a yeah. phenomenal um, defender as well. Yeah, yeah. And I actually see a little bit of him in your game. You think? Yes, I do. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I just think it's th- there's, a, there's a certain energy that you guys share. Because one thing about Rio, when he gets onto the pitch, he's, he's very serious. Yeah. He's quite intimidating, actually. Like, uh, if you listen to some of uh, interviews by other f- footballers, they will tell you like that he is quite you know intimidating. Like, people fear him. Yeah. And I see that in your game as well. Like... When you're on the pitch, people know that there is a defender out there that's going to give us a tough time, <laughs> and it's going to be so hectic. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to say. Um, mm. I, I do quite like, you know, the the the, the thrill of of like um, come up against a good player. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, come in one v one situation, and um, you know, you always try and outbest them if if. if do you know what I mean? Like I, I don't know. Yes. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it just feels good to be able to. Now that you can stop this person, mm-hmm. that is, people know it's good. So if you can stop him, that means, you know, you are that good. Yeah. So I see the challenge, and then you know, I accept the challenge, and it's, I enjoy it for me to throw. So being a right back is more like a challenge for you. Sorry, not a right back, full back. Yeah. More, you see it more as a challenge when you take on a, a striker or a forward or a midfielder, because those are the guys you obviously go up against. I feel more as a as a defender to be fair, like. It, mm. I like to, um, uh, I don't know how you call it, keep the, the good players quiet, like, mm-hmm. during the game, do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so if there's a good player on the pitch and then and he's, he's, he's playing in my, my area of the pitch, mm-hmm. I'll try my best to keep him quiet so, um, you know, he's, people see that maybe it's not all that, but obviously, like, mm-hmm. yeah, for me, for myself as well, to gain, to gain confidence as well, so, um, yeah, it's a thrill. And that obviously just makes your game better and better because once you keep them out of the yeah. out of their zone, yeah, makes things better for yeah, you. Definitely. And um, did you always envision like this phenomenal and this um, influential football career that you have now? Like when you were still in the academy and when you were transitioning from the academy going on to the first team, did you see that for yourself? Um, I think yeah. I think it was when I was first in the first team squad ever. Mm. I think I was on the, I think I was on the bench against Liverpool, mm-hmm. and then um, the atmosphere was amazing. It was crazy. Like the stadium was full. You had world class players on the pitch. You know, mm-hmm. like Sterling was playing. I was, and then just, it was just, it's just, it's just, it's just crazy. You know what I mean? Like, and then, it was an amazing experience. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think since from then on is when it happened. To be fair, because from then on it's just like crazy. Like, like you could that could be you one day. And you, you just, just got, knew. Yeah, you just got to keep working and then it'll come. Yeah. So that's basically like that. That was actually like your aha moment. Like, you know what? I can actually become yeah. Ryan Yambe, yeah. who you are today. Yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes um, 
what most footballers don't realize, and those that I've spoke to, like don't actually realize how big they are. Like, do you realize how big you are, or do you try to shy away from that? Um, no, nah, not really. I just like to think I'm a normal person. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a normal person, so I just get by it every day just as a normal person. Just, you know, do what, you, what you're paid to yeah, do basically yeah. and just live your life. Yeah. And um, it's quite hectic also, obviously, going through so many stages to get to where you are today. And I would just like to ask, like, if, if, if there's someone like, back home from Namibia watching this video right now and that needs some motivation, what would you tell them? I'd like to just say, like, Anything can really happen, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just about taking the opportunities in the right moments and the, in the you know, areas. I think it's just about once you commit to something, I think you just need to commit to it 100%. Mm -hmm. and you're working at it, no matter what anyone says, it's just about mm -hmm. you need to stay focused and improve yourself because if you improve yourself, I think everything else just follows. Mm -hmm. So it's just about, you know, commitment, focus, mm -hmm. and then. Um, being persistent and patience as well, of course. What exactly do you think it entails to be a successful footballer besides playing football itself? Uh, I think discipline. Mm. Discipline to, um, you know, avoid the like... The... Uh, <laughs> I, I, <just laughs> I think I know what you want you to say, yes. Um, okay, so let me say it. So basically avoid unnecessary things that are not building to your career yeah basically yeah and you know yeah. that kind of stuff i just think mm. i mean it's good it's good to have a good time of course but i think there's right moments for it and then because I've, I've seen a few players that were, were really really great when i was growing up playing with them i was like wow mm -hmm. it's good and then obviously as you as you grow up and you're getting older there's a lot of influence that comes of course. and then it just makes you fall apart and then to look at them now it's just start to see where they are but you know I think it's just about mm. being disciplined. So basically it's um, balancing your social life and what it is that you're paid to do your career. Yeah. And balancing your social life, you mean like there's a time and a place for everything. So there's a time for leisure, mm -hmm. which is obviously like perhaps during the break in the in the league and so forth. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Exactly what you said. Um, mm. Just about time and really, do you know what I mean? This, and obviously being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. It's about decision making as well. What about, you know, you could get people to ask, to ask you to go out day mm -hmm. before a game. Mm -hmm. Some people would do it. And then obviously you just, just got to say, no, hold yourself back. Yeah, I can't. Mm -hmm. I got something big tomorrow. So I'll mm -hmm. see you another time. Because it's at the end of the day, it's your career. It's not theirs. Of course. So you just have to you know, watch out for yourself. And you obviously have something to lose. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. As well as maybe they don't. But you know what I mean, it's, everyone's different. So while we're talking about leisure and social, I'd like to wish you congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> According to several reports, actually, and several media houses and several TV stations, <laughs> you're engaged. Yeah. I'm so happy finally. for you. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, what made you take this big step? Um, I've, I've been over quite a while, so mm. actually, we were friends before we got together. Oh, nice. We met in church, uh, so we're friends. Oh, you guys met in church? Yeah. Okay, I think ladies, you guys need to hear. Do you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all need to be going to church. <laughs> oh, just joking, but yes, you guys met in church. But yeah, yeah, okay. so I've known for quite a while. So I've been on for me about six, maybe seven years now. So oh, wow. we're quite close and we get each other. So I just thought, you know, mm. it's time. It's the right time you need to yeah. take the next step yeah, exactly. and transition into to life, life yeah. and is is she then part of your support system and what does your support system look like part of my support system um i think obviously we support each other mm -hmm. but like um i think as life goes on and we're, i'm obviously end up being together and i think then that's when it becomes you know we can support each other more mm -hmm. but yeah you know we we'll keep each other going and is there do you have other people that form part of your support system besides your coach uh, for example, maybe like family side and so forth, or what is what does your support system look like? Because I think this this information would be very important to people because I don't think they realize what it takes to be able to keep this kind of career going at the level that you're going at. Yeah. So what what kind of support do you have outside football that keeps this career going and that keeps you, you know, getting better and that keeps giving you all these amazing opportunities? Um, support, so obviously, obviously my parents, of course. Obviously they, were, they, were, they were the number ones. Mm -hmm. I think especially my mom as well, she's really 
into sports. She used to play in that ball back in the middle, so she's really into sports. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So sports is in the is in the blood. <laughs> yeah. Your mom used to play netball. Yeah. She oh, that's netball. amazing. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where you get the the, the sports yeah, from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, All right. Obviously, my, my dad back home, mm. and maybe like, he's, he's back home, not, my parents aren't together anymore, so okay. he used to play football as well, so again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. So your dad was a footballer, right? Yeah, so I think that's where I get my uh, first right. from. So, right. uh, listen, this side, mm. my stepdad as well. <laughs> obviously, I think it's been a big part of, you know, when you when I say discipline, right. he's very strict on discipline, so um, I think that's helped me a lot, kept me stable. Mm -hmm. And obviously, yeah, my mum, she's you know, a big supporter. You know, like she, if I need, like if you was a mum, you'd care for your son. But she, she mm -hmm. she's really been there for me. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I said that. And so that is that your support structure, which is now your family, yeah. and then now which is going to be your your significant other as yeah. well. Yeah. All right, and then part of that forms obviously your coach. Yeah. With Blackburn Rovers, and that is Tony Mowbray. I hope I'm pronouncing his surname yeah, right. That's right. So, what impact has Tony had on your life? Um, I don't know, I don't know, you would say probably call, I probably call him like a football father. Um, I think so. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like like he him himself has always a bit disciplined. You know, he's he's always um, he's always been on my case to to, to be improving every every year that I've been.